G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for our round 11 predictions. This may be the last just the tips I do for a while or maybe I'll do one more um, in light of a trip that I've got coming up. But in today's video, we've got a pretty difficult round ahead of tipping. I looked ahead at the, uh, the upcoming games and I'm kind of struggling to begin with and I'm not looking forward to how many I could potentially get wrong in this upcoming week. I am currently 406th in the competition, which uh, I think is an improvement of about 40 odd. Uh, so I think I actually went up I had uh, six correct tips, and the three I got wrong were Port Adelaide beating Melbourne. I had backed in the Ds to win that game. It was tough. I, I tipped Geelong to beat Fremantle in Perth, and the third one I got wrong was I tipped Adelaide uh, to knock off the Bulldogs in a bit of an upset there, and I got that wrong. So shame on me. We'll shout out the round 10 winner. It was someone called Pieboy1985 who got a perfect uh, perfect score, rather, and the margin just off of one point. So that's really, really well done to Pie Boy there. And the tipping leader is Melanima, or Melanie Ma. Again, this name has thrown me two weeks in a row, who is leading the comp with 69 correct tips. So 10 full tips ahead of me. That's one per week, basically. So well done to those guys. The fantasy leader is called Bailey's Brawlers, and that's, again, the second week in a row with an impressive average of 2,226. And our game day squad winner of the week um, so I'm, like I said, I'm going to start putting that in each update on just the tips as to who's winning the weekly competition. Uh, and that is someone called Dos Troyers with an impressive score of 25-31. I comparatively did not have a good round of game day squad points, but I will go into that in my update tomorrow. Don't forget guys, the True Footy YouTube channel and Just The Tips is sponsored by Manscaped.com. So if you have any male grooming needs, if you want to level up your male grooming routine, you want to add something like a cologne or the actual you know, body hair trimmer itself, you want to add some ball moisturizer, some crop reviver, ball deodorant, all this stuff, all the stuff that you didn't think existed, it's there on the manscaped.com website. And you can get 20% off and free shipping any purchases that you decide to make on that website to level up your grooming routine. It's coming up to winter in Australia now. It's getting close. Don't take the easy option. Don't allow yourself the temptation of uh, letting everything grow out. Keep yourself trimmed. It'll make you feel better. But 20% off and free shipping. Please enjoy. So here we are for round 11, and we're going to start off with one of those tricky games that I alluded to where I don't really know where to tip. We've got Sydney hosting Carlton at the SCG, two out-of-form sides. The Swans are most recently getting that last gasp victory over North at Marvel Stadium, and it was a bit of a cripple fight, to be honest. I say that respectfully, but, you know, the form North Melbourne's in, um, they were arguably a great chance to win that game, save for that interchange infringement. And Carlton, you know, like I said in my weekly review video, across a lot of key stats, they kept up with Collingwood, but the jarring difference between the two sides was the class and their ability to generate clearances, or at least turn clearances into meaningful inside 50s was off. So they're a little bit dysfunctional at the moment. So we got two sides colliding here that, you know, in the first month of the season, I thought two, uh, maybe not premiership contenders, but two finalists. I would have locked it in and now both sides look far off the pace so I don't know who to tip here because Sydney I probably had a little bit more faith than up until recently the injury situation is getting worse still missing a lot of key players and in the last couple of weeks they've lost Laddams and they've lost Callum Mills etc I looked at the head-to-head -head between these two sides because I wanted to see you know what the SCG form is like and the last SCG game Sydney won in 2021 and in 2019, Carlton won it and, you know, Carlton weren't great in 2021 and Sydney weren't great in 2019. So not a whole lot to go off there. This one is going to be a prediction based on gut feel. And at the moment, I think I actually, I think I'm going to tip Carlton here. And uh, it's hard to make a meaningful case for why. I think the available best 22s, Carlton, I, I just have this feeling might click into gear this game. So I know this is one I'm going to get wrong and people are going to laugh at me when, when I get this wrong. But I'll say Carlton win a shock win in Sydney by four points. Then we've got St Kilda hosting Hawthorne at Marvel Stadium. St Kilda coming off a uh, pretty tough win against the Giants in Sydney. They've got a couple of forwards back. You know, Max King's back into the side now. He kicked four and, and amongst the smalls as well, Higgins and Gresham. They're still dangerous even though they've been missing players throughout this year. And they were poor against Adelaide and Adelaide came back and was a tough victory against the Giants. And they're colliding with Hawthorne here who have just absolutely run around the West Coast Eagles witches hats down in Launceston. I'm not bitter. Uh, but yeah, another tricky one to assess because Hawthorne looked a million bucks in that game. And we know that they're capable. They're, they're talented. That's not a, a massive shock. It's just that this will be a completely different test of opposition here. So they're certainly capable of, you know, playing out of their skins and winning this game. It's not absolutely crazy to suggest that. But I think, you know, with the St Kilda, I think they've had their dip. And I think going against Hawthorne here, 
I'd be surprised if they drop this game. So I'll say St Kilda win this game by 28 points. Then we've got Melbourne and Fremantle at the MCG. And this game uh, reminds me of last year when they uh, clashed at the G in about the middle of the year. And this was when the flag mantle talk really started to escalate where Fremantle got a good win away from home. Um, they're catching the Demons at a good time potentially uh, with Clayton Oliver, I think is done a hammy and is unlikely to be playing in this game from what I understand. So he's been such a like integral part of Melbourne being good. It's actually rare that we've seen Melbourne play without Clayton Oliver, who's arguably been one of the best performers this year. Probably the best performer, I would say. That being said, the Demons are still a strong side. They nearly beat Port in Adelaide, um, which at the moment is a tough ask. Port Adelaide have proven themselves to be a very good side and difficult to stop. And it wasn't so much that Melbourne didn't play well. Regardless, it was tough conditions. And I think this will be an eight day break for them. So it'll be interesting to see. They could be a little bit vulnerable here. And Fremantle had a good win against the Cats in Perth. And admittedly, the Cats are missing some soldiers, but have made the point over the last three weeks in terms of the numbers we're seeing from Fremantle and their ability to find targets in the forward line and for those targets to find the scoreboard as well. We've seen big improvement there. So there is a good chance that Fremantle win this game. I think I'm going to tip Melbourne and be conservative, but this has me iffy. I think Fremantle could win this game genuinely. I'll say Melbourne win this by 21 points though. Then we've got Geelong and the Giants at Cardinia Park aka GMHBA. Uh, I just talked about the Cats having lost to Fremantle in Perth. Again, Fremantle uh, are experiencing a bit of an improvement in form, absolutely, and, and structurally they're looking a little bit better. Meanwhile, the Cats are going through some injury woes of their own at the moment, but they sit five and five, as you can see, and uh, with an incredible percentage of 120%. That's pretty good for a five and five team, but notoriously hard to beat in, uh, in GMHBA and we, we saw that a few weeks ago when a good Adelaide side traveled there and lost the game by five goals. So despite their injuries, I'm still tempted to tip the Cats here. The Giants were pretty valiant against the, the Saints. It was a good game. The midfielders uh, did their thing as they so often do. It's a pretty strong Giants midfield and the forward line was dangerous. Toby Green's back on the side to keep the couple last week. Look, I think Geelong and GWS right now, there's not a huge gap on current form considering Geelong's outs, but the GMHBA factor makes me very, very reluctant to tip the Giants in an upset here. If this was, say, you know, in Sydney, then I may actually be tipping the Giants for an upset, but probably not still. I'll, I'll tip the Cats to win this by 34 points. Gold Coast versus the Western Bulldogs should be a good clash. I feel like there's been some good battles between these two sides in recent years. Gold Coast I think, as I've, I've said in previous videos, I think we're seeing a bit of an evolution of them over the last month or so. And, you know, they've actually handled the lack of Took Miller in their midfield remarkably well with guys like Raylan Anderson. Anderson in particular has become a very, very good footballer this year. Last week, they got close to Brisbane. They hung with them for three quarters at the Gabba. I think that's a respectable effort. They fell away badly in the end. But overall, I still think the difference between Gold Coast at the start of the year to what we're seeing now is pretty stark and therefore I respect them enough to consider them as a chance in this game. The Bulldogs, you know, they took on an Adelaide side that came to Ballarat. Adelaide beat them in Ballarat last year. And further to that, the Crows are in good form this year, having just beaten the, uh, the respectable Saints you know, by, what was it, 51 points the, the week previous. So having said all that, the Dogs, I think, you know, having won seven of their last eight, have established themselves as a, a pretty strong side this year. They're sitting comfortably in that top six. And I think they absolutely deserve to be there at the moment. The midfield stars are firing. You know, Bont has got to be, a, he's probably a lock for the Australian team right now. Bailey Smith as well was fantastic last week. And I am reluctant to tip against the Bulldogs here. So it's not a crazy suggestion. You know, we might see one of those games where Gold Coast pull out all the stops at home and beat a genuinely good team like they do on occasion. But I'm still going to tip the Dogs. I'll tip, it, tip them by eight points though. I think this will be a grind and an entertaining game to watch. Then we've got West Coast versus Essendon. Uh, is there any point even talking about this game? Um, yeah, West Coast, we lost by 116 points to the worst team in the league last week. I say the worst team in the league. We know that clearly West Coast is the worst team in the league. But Hawthorne were 18th. I've talked about it all week. Um, we know how bad that result was and we've reached new levels of pathetic to the point where I think even some Fremantle fans have find it a little bit sad, to be honest. So some of them aren't even happy. They're just like, whoa, this is really depressing. Anyway, you know my thoughts on West Coast. Um, they're Injury depleted, obviously, low on confidence. They're not playing well. Um, will some players come back into the side this week, potentially, but you're just shuffling deck chairs on the Titanic at this point. I think things will get better. 
But they're coming up against Essendon, who just won the, the, the Dreamtime game in thrilling fashion. And like I said, have been respectable this year. They had a four goal, uh, four game losing streak, but they had tough opponents. And I think what we've seen from them this year gives me every confidence that they're a good chance to not only beat West Coast in Perth, but win well. So I'm gonna say Essendon win this by, I won't say, you know, it won't be crazy like 100 points because I'm, I'm expecting the pride to kick in for West Coast a little bit and try and mitigate some damage. And even tactically, they might do that. So Essendon by healthy 65 points though. Let's be real. Then we've got Richmond versus Port Adelaide at the MCG. This is another tricky one. Now, um, Richmond obviously have been pretty patchy this year. And the elephant in the room is that Damien Hardwick has stepped down as coach. So we actually don't know at the time I record this if there's gonna be a caretaker this game, but I'd imagine he will at the very least, be coaching for one more game. He won't just leave uh, immediately. So the new coach and caretaker factor, where well, there's this trend where sometimes, you know, caretaker ca uh, coaches come in and they win a game. I'm seriously doubting that will apply here. But for the power, they've been, you know, sensational over the last, you know, seven weeks or whatever it's been uh, since they're you know I keep saying it but the opening three rounds they've flicked the switch since then and uh, they probably legitimize themselves with a big win over the demons in Adelaide last week which is which is a big scalp to take the thing that does concern me with Port Adelaide though is their form at the MCG and uh, I think they've been there once this year and they lost by 71 points to the pies so let's have a look at the head-to-head -head between these two sides the last time they met it was only 12 points to Richmond back in 2022, where both of these sides, in fact, actually no, Port Adelaide missed finals and Richmond made top six. So that's a pretty good effort. Prior to that was back in 2019 and they got smashed, but Richmond were premiers back then. I don't think Port were any good. So that doesn't really tell me a lot. Part of me wonders if Richmond will pull out all the stops this week and uh, try and get a win for hard week. Just in the, the emotion of, of the, the week that will have been. As I said, I don't know if hard week at this time is, is coaching to the end of the year or if this is his last game. I genuinely don't know the answer to that, but it will play a factor. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a, um, a more trademark Richmond performance in this game. So I'm actually gonna tip an upset here. I'm gonna say Richmond shock Port Adelaide. Maybe not shock, that's probably a bit dramatic. And win by six points. Port Adelaide is a far better side. Absolutely no doubt. But sometimes after a good win as well, you, you drop a game you don't expect. And I think that could be this game here. Then we've got Collingwood versus North Melbourne at, uh, at Marvel Stadium. I don't know how much there is to say about this game. And I might be shooting myself in the foot there because North could upset them. But Collingwood, obviously, the best team in the comp. Look at that percentage. 9-1, 131%. Uh, disposed of Carlton fairly easily last week by getting five goals in front and kind of coasting from that point on. And North Melbourne actually did play pretty well against the Swans. Admittedly, the Swans aren't very strong at the moment, but we saw some good signs from some good, talented youth. Bailey Scott, uh, Harry Sheasel, Jai Simkin, they were good. George Wardlaw as well in particular uh, made a good do debut. So the vibe at North Melbourne is more positive after that loss to Sydney um, than perhaps some of their previous losses. That being said, I don't, I'm not going to deliberate too much over this game. Uh, I'll be shocked if you know North get within three goals. So I'm going to say North Melbourne, sorry, Collingwood should win by healthy 44. Then we've got a potentially exciting clash between the Crows and the Lions at Adelaide Oval. The Crows are a little bit disappointing, you'd have to say, at Ballarat after a big 51 point win against St Kilda in Adelaide. And we've seen a little bit of a big dichotomy of their home performances and their away performance uh, performances in general. And they're at home, they look a million bucks. And away, understandably, they uh, haven't been as consistent. So they were a bit disappointing against the Dogs. And they come up against a very strong, consistent, resilient Lions side that generally doesn't get upset much. They were challenged by the Gold Coast Suns and professionally ran out that game in a four-quarter performance to win by seven goals. So the wild card here is Adelaide's form at home, right? They're a very strong home side and tough to beat. And you've got to give them a strong chance in this game for that reason. However, Brisbane are actually a pretty good Adelaide side as well. If you look at the head-to-head -head here, the last two times in 2021 and 2022 that Brisbane traveled to Adelaide, they beat them, uh, not even just beat them, they beat them by about well, six and ten goals respectively. So that weighs into it for me. If Brisbane travel well to Adelaide, then I don't necessarily think the home ground advantage is as strong as it, as it could be against certain other opponents. So while Adelaide will put up a good fight and they are a better team than they were in those last two clashes, 
I think I'm gonna have to back in Brisbane here. If they're good in Adelaide, and they're generally a very good team, this will be a tough one. But I'll tip a closer game, and I'll say that this one is only three goals. So that wraps up my round 11 tips, guys. Let me know in the comments uh, what you agree with, what you disagree with, and uh, what's your upset of the round. Fremantle beating Melbourne is potentially my upset of the round, um, but I'm very, very intrigued to see how that game goes. As always, guys, I appreciate your support. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.